earlier today, earlier today I was actually praising the right honourable gentleman, the leader of the opposition, and today I am able to quote him because his words are words of wisdom. He said on the 24th of September 2019, exactly one month ago, this crisis can only be settled with a general election. That election needs to take place as soon as this government's threat of a disastrous no deal is taken off the table. We have met the condition he set. The Prime Minister has got a deal. No deal is off the table. And yet, for some reason, the opposition still doesn't want a general election. But, Mr Speaker, we know why this is. We know why they won't have an election. It's because they're afraid of the voters. To the voters, so feeling disenfranchised are they with their socialist um, friends that the socialists are running away from an election. Mr. Speaker, isn't it not saddening that Scotland the brave used to be the call that we would get, and now it's Scotland the runaway, Scotland the let's not have an election? The SNP, who wish to challenge the government, actually want us to stay in office. I never thought that the broad coalition of the United Kingdom would have the Scottish Nationalist Party supporting a Tory government remaining in office. I look forward to that appearing on our election leaflets. But it occurs to me, Mr Speaker, that tomorrow is St Crispin's Day, the anniversary of Agincourt. What a good day it might be for us to meet and show our independence of spirit. Mr Bernard Jenkins. Can I thank my right honourable friend for his statement? And can I just uh, remind him that uh, people in this House are blocking Brexit in the name of the sovereignty of Parliament. But whose is this sovereignty? What sovereignty do we hold that does not come from the British people? And shouldn't now the British people be allowed to decide who represents them in this House? Mr Speaker, as so often I bow to my honourable friend's constitutional expertise, it is quite clear that the sovereignty of this House did not fall upon us like a comet from heaven. It comes to us from the British people. It is the people's sovereignty delegated to Parliament. We need, as we are incapable of using it, to return it to them and ask them to have another election and decide how their sovereignty should be used. This House had 41 days for Maastricht, 25 for Lisbon, and now the Prime Minister expects us to rush through this legislation in fewer than a dozen days. Days, and he expects us to do that because he has failed. He tried to prorogue Parliament in order to rush this through and get us off the cliff without a deal. He has failed. The Liberal Democrats will not support this until we can be sure that this country will not be crashed out of Brexit and the electorate has the choice. It's always exciting, Mr Speaker, to discover what the position of the Liberal Democrats is because it changes like a weather vane. It's been bland. And does my right honourable friend agree that if the President of France stands firm and declines us the extension, that there is still plenty of time next week to get the withdrawal bill passed um, by this House and in the other place, given the position all of the other side have taken on the unacceptability of no deal, and then the general election itself can then decide who is negotiating the future relationship between the United Kingdom and the European Union. Mr Speaker, if there were a will to get the bill through, it could of course be done. Yes, my honourable friend, my right honourable friend, is absolutely right, uh, and that it would satisfy the European Union, it would get the deal done, we would have left and we could do it by the 31st of October, and that is what we should aim to do. Regarding Monday's business, before the House considers the second reading of the Environment Bill, members will have an opportunity to debate and approve a motion relating to an early parliamentary general election. Yeah. Business statement. Mr Speaker, tomorrow we will find out what extension has been granted. We opposed the Prime Minister's withdrawal agreement bill, but it passed second reading. Several of my Labour colleagues have voted for that bill, not because they support the Prime Minister's deal, but because they wanted to scrutinise it, amend it and debate it. That's how Parliament works. As, Parliament works. That's your job. As is the normal process in this House. We on this
this side offered the Prime Minister our support for a proper timetable to enable the withdrawal agreement bill to be properly dealt with. And wait for it. And wait for it if the extension allows. Yes. <laughs> Mr Speaker, the Right Honourable Lady says the Prime Minister has not made sufficient time. In his letter to the Leader of the Opposition, my Right Honourable Friend says we will make available all possible time between now and the 6th of November. We, we, Mr Speaker, we, Mr. Speaker are willing to start work Tomorrow, if you are willing to recall Parliament, we are willing to work 24 hours a day between now and the 6th.